Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm a Ukrainian and I have decided I will log daily from my country Ukraine since the start of the soulful war with Russia and in my daily videos I try to update you on the important real life situations in my country Ukraine and of course I'm always glad to answer your questions and to clarify some facts from our history, our culture, our background or whatever interests you. And today I'm ready to answer some questions that I have received in comments and mainly they deal with the Russian missiles that strike Ukrainian port Odessa just days or even hours after the signing of uh, Green Deal. Well, uh, you all know that I'm a huge fan of Russian diplomacy, non-existing diplomacy, and that I um, always say that, but definitely quote many smart people who wrote that many centuries before. We repeated that uh, any kind of negotiations and treaties with Russia, any kind of agreements, they are not worth even the price of the paper on which they were signed, because Russia never keeps its promises. And we all know that among various terroristic threats that Russian criminal government poses on the world, and these are to nuke different countries of the world, to uh, use uh, chemical weapons, and another threat that they like practicing is grain and um, famine all over the world, global famine, which will be caused by inability of Ukraine to export the products that are so much needed in various corners of the world. And one more threat that they try to disseminate is gas and the winters will be cold and bad. So it goes without saying that even if we don't name Russia a terrorist state, it lives and acts exactly as a terrorist state. And uh, also uh, famine is a very painful question, is a very painful aspect as it was um, actually the reason, um, the instrument of the first genocide that uh, Russians committed here in Ukraine. There were actually more than one Holodomor famine in Ukraine, but the most renowned one is the Holodomor famine of 1932-1933. I know I have to record a separate historic vlog on that and I will definitely, uh, but uh, history repeats itself and now Russia threatens this famine, not just Ukraine, but many countries all over the world, those countries that depend on Ukrainian export. And when you don't think globally about the world, you don't notice all of these things, but the more you look into the economic map, into relations that exist, the more you realize how fragile and at the same time important this economic uh, food balance is. So here uh, we have Russia that threatens the world, that the world will be hungry because while they are destroying Ukraine, uh, Ukrainians are not able to export uh, the grain. And uh, actually, not many Ukrainians were huge fans of this grain deal because any deal with Russia, any kind of negotiations with Russia is very problematic. But on the 22nd of July, with the help of the United Nations a respected organization and the Turkish president Recep Erdogan, uh, there were uh, agreements, deals signed one on the side of Ukraine and the second one on the side of Russia. And according to that deal um, that was supervised by the United Nations and uh, President Zelensky even said that now it is the responsibility not only of Ukraine or Russia, which is always irresponsible, but it is also the responsibility of the supranational organization, United Nations organization, uh, to control the uh, results of this deal to control the rules inscripted in this uh, treaty and according to this deal Ukrainian ports were protected from Russian missile strikes and uh, free shipping transportation of important products to the destinations where they are much awaited uh, will definitely mm, become possible. So, uh, it was signed on the 22nd of uh, July and today is the 23rd of July and Russia strikes four missiles, two of which were stopped by Ukrainian anti-missile services and two actually hit 
uh, the port and destroyed some of the infrastructure. And uh, here is the question, like, um, if there are any people on the planet who still doubt that, like, we can negotiate with Russia, here is a very bright illustration that we cannot, because um, less than one day, after the signature of this grain deal, they attack Ukrainian port Odessa, that is a very important port, a beautiful city, um, important tourist destination, and also an important agricultural center. So it was uh, targeted by Russian missiles. And uh, not according to the deal. But the problem is not only their uh, disrespect to Ukraine and its important mission in feeding the planet, but also disrespect that they demonstrate to the United Nations as organization that uh, demonstrates its inability to work and uh, like to guarantee the things that it is supposed to guarantee. Also to the president of Turkey, Erdogan, who uh, said that he worked really hard to make this deal, grain deal work. And uh, also, um, please, when you hear people saying that Ukrainians have to give up, Ukrainians have to negotiate, like Orban says it, like other peaceful, peace-loving people say it, uh, we have to keep in mind that no, everything is very complicated and it's definitely not the fault of Ukraine that we can actually face the famine in the world because Ukraine was good at growing crops, Ukraine was always good at collecting crops, Ukraine was always good at transporting crops and everything was fine. Now Russian orcs came to kill us. Even in the minefields Ukrainian farmers wearing bulletproof vests and some of them dying in the process continue sowing the fields, collecting the grain because they want to transport it to the places where it is so much needed. And then they target our ports, they kill people who work in that port, they um, destroy this grain, they steal this grain mixed with Ukrainian blood and they don't let us feed the world. And then they say that it is Ukrainian fault because Ukrainians don't want to negotiate what? You know, there is a joke, maybe I have read it in comments or somewhere else, like uh, that uh, Russians say to Ukraine, Russia says to Ukraine, we want to kill all the Ukrainians. Ukrainians answer to Russia, no, we don't want that. And negotiators advise, maybe you can decide 50-50. No. We cannot decide 50-50. We cannot close our eyes on this global terrorism that Russia imposes on the world. And we cannot let them do anything they want. Um, and what is ugly that they use arguments uh, to um, make the world persuade that we have to surrender because if uh, we don't, they will continue striking the ports. The problem of famine is that they mine Ukrainian fields kill Ukrainian civilians, strike Ukrainian ports, nothing else. So Russia is to blame. And please, if you hear some arguments who say that Ukrainians should surrender, please stand with Ukraine, stand for Ukraine, because you cannot negotiate with terrorists and this is nothing else because they frighten the world, they fear the world, they terrify the world with arguments about famine, about cold winters and other things. So uh, thank you for your support. Uh, please continue supporting Ukraine because this war in Ukraine is not normal. Thank you for buying me coffees and becoming my patrons. I'm always very, very, very grateful for the subscriptions because they help me grow the channel and speak more about the situation in Ukraine, the war in Ukraine and ask for the help for us to win in this unjust war. And tomorrow I will be really glad to see you on a live session questions and answers 20 um, 8 p.m. Ukrainian time and um, I have mentioned it in the, I don't know in timer or elsewhere so you can see the details for other time zones. Once again thank you for watching Slava Ukraini.